Sardinia, Catamanta, the silly Isles. <laughs> Every time. Oh, it's perfect. It always reminds me of, um, I don't know if you remember a children's TV program called Mr. Ben. Yeah. Where he, he always reminds me of Mr. Ben. The whole album reminds me of Mr. Ben, actually. Just in the, the kind of way of going into a different world. But let me ask about Phenomenal Cat. Firstly, technically, who is the cat? When, I, in, and I mean, in, you know, the one, the person in the Kings who's going, I ah, think, la, 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 la. I think, <laughs> I can't quite remember exactly, but I th think Pete was doing the, Fum, fum, dear, lump, or something. But I think in the end, Ray ended up doing everything. Oh, no. <laughs> no, not again. No, no, I'm joking. No, it is. <laughs> I always thought that Fun Phenomenon Cup was always really special to me because I think it kind of was like a, a veiled spiritual journey, like it, the mystical part of all of us, it may be the, the phenomenon of Kurt, is that when we start to journey in the mind or heart or whatever towards something, and spirituality is an adventure. And so he's going to Kathmandu, <laughs> Cal Sardinia, silly arts, Bahamas too, I love that. And I kind of see it from that point of view, it, 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 to me it highlights the spiritual part of all of us, or the mystic in us all. Well also he's got a, he's sort of reached Sartori by the end of it, hasn't he? Because he's been on his adventures and then he's just reached this state of enlightenment where all he has to do is get big and fat and sit there and he's the phenomenal cat. Well it sounds alright to me. It's <laughs> great. So I think, I think Pete Quaife said about Village Green is that Although you say, you know, that Ray did the vocals of Phenomenal Cat. I think he might have been a bit Pete. No, I've been a bit facetious. But Pete said, and, and maybe you agree, that this was an album where everyone was really involved. And that everyone had, you know, they had real involvement and parts to play on. Absolutely. On I don't think the people tend to, well, not real people, <laughs> <laughs> real fans, I mean. <laughs> That, uh, a lot of collaboration is to do with feeling. It's not always about these notes on a piece of paper you got to do and they go exactly like, that, like this. <coughs> Music and songs come alive when there's a certain energy, like a like love, like a bonding or galvanising together to try and create something. There's more going on than just the melody, the feeling, you know, that's what, what um, I've always been into is feeling. You know, how does, how does this thing make you feel? And um, to me, feel happy, sad, ponderous, thoughtful, you know, it's, that's where I see music and art and people, you know. Something you said to me on that point earlier on, Dave, is that when you're making solo material with people, with musicians who you didn't necessarily know very well, even though it'd be polite, it'd be very hard, whereas with Ray, however much you might fight, you had some kind of telepathy, because obviously you know each other all your lives and you understood each other so well. well. Also, with Pete as well, but there was that same kind of thing going on. Because uh, Pete really, in the very early days, before we even had drummers, speak of. Um, Pete has really held the thing together a lot. His humour is bringing me and Ray together and, and, and I think it, it can't be, you, know, you can't say too much. I think not that it gets a, a bum rap basically, but I think Pete sometimes gets a little buried in, in the overall scheme of things with the kinks. But, um, and now I really don't.